Madan Kumar Bhandarvi was born to father Devi Prasad Bhandarvi and mother Chandrakala Bhandarvi as second son on June 27, 1952 AD. He became famous all over the district for being able to memorize even difficult lesson after only hearing twice and for memorizing Chandi in his childhood even though he did not know the letters yet. Madan Bhandari who was born into a simple farming family in Tonte village in Dungesang village development committee of Taplejung district in the eastern hilly district of Nepal. Madan Bhandari spent his childhood leaping over the cliffs of the sloping settlement, enjoying the scenic landscape of the nearby Tamur and Mauwa rivers, ascending and descending the lakes. The family, which has now more than a dozen members, including six brothers and five sisters, moved from the hills to Lonchi and Dulari Village Development Committee of Morang District in 2026 BS. Four years later, the family relocated to Itahara in the district. After the death of his Burmese Maoli grandfather, Chandralal Pokhralir, Madan Bhandari spent most of his childhood with the Maoli family in the nearby village of Bhimchauri. Madan Bhandari, the third child of the Pandit Purohit family, started learning the alphabet at the tender age of seven shortly after he was admitted to a Sanskrit school run by his father in Tunibote, Bardara. Madan Bhandari, an 11-year-old boy, started regular studies by enrolling in class 6 at Bal Subodhani Sanskrit Pradhan Patsala in Medibang, which can be reached by walking all day from home. Apart from Sanskrit, he also studied Nepali, English, Mathematics, Geography, History, Science, etc. Madan Mandari, who enjoys sports in his spare time, completed the two-year studies of class 9 and 10 in only nine months and passed the SLC examination in 2024 BS with excellence. Madan Bhandari, who has developed intense talent with creative study ability, followed his brother Manoj, who lives in Brindavan, India, to quench his thirst for higher education. After completing his studies from here, he left for Dehradun in search of a comfortable environment. After spending almost a year in Dehradun, he moved to Baranasi. Madan Bhandari, who has a serious and in-depth study of the subjects, finally completed his Sastri and Acharya level studies from Banaras Sanskrit University. Madan Bhandari, who has a special interest in literary activities, had close ties with sports, music, community movement, awakening politics, etc. during his studies. While in Banaras, his contacts with Socialist leader of India, Communist leader Jyoti Basu, then CPI leader Hari Kinsu Surjet and Nepali leaders Comrade Puspalal Shrasta, Manmohan Adhikari, Mohan Vikram Singh, Nara Bahadur Karmacharya, BP Koryala and Sahana Pradhan motivated Madan Mandari to embark on a journey of a radical change in Nepal. The communists grew up in India due to extreme poverty. Madan Bhandari's tendency towards leftist politics seems to have increased in the course of his study in Vanavas. Around 2027-2028 BS, there was extreme poverty, dictatorship of the panchayat, exploitation of the feudal lords, extreme oppression of the peasants and workers. At the same time, armed struggle was started under the leadership of K.P. Uli, Ramnath Dahal, Krishna Kunikel, Virendra Rajbangsi, Mandal Satar, Chandra Prakash Mainali, Radha Krishna Mainali, Jeevan Gimire, Chalnath Kanal, and others who had just come to Japa from Thera tomb. Some people, including landlord Chandra Prasad Dakal, were killed on charge of extreme exploitation of farmers. Madan Vandari not only became involved in the political movement, but eventually went underground for the anti panchayat struggle. Comrade Mohan Chandra Adhikari, K.P. Oli, Chandra Prakash Mainali, Radha Krishna Mainali, Ramnath Dahal, and many other leaders were arrested by the panchayat rulers. Nine people, including Ramnath Dahal 
and Virendra Razbangsi were killed in Sukhani Forest on the border of Japa and Ilam on Fagon 21st, 2028 BS, under the pretext of moving the jail. Other leaders were imprisoned and subjected to extreme torture. However, CP Mainali, Pradip Nepal, Bir Bahadur Lama, and other leaders broke out of jail and got out. But KP Oli and Mohan Chandra were sentenced to life imprisonment. Mohan Chandra Adhikari spent 17 years in jail in the history of Nepal's political movement. KP Oli, RK, Mandal Satar, Naresh Karel got out from jail in 14 years. Panchayat repression was on the rise across the country. It was during this time that Madan Bhandari became known as an active student leader after 2028 BS. Editing and publishing progressive literature and literary writings brought him to Puspalal, the founding leader of the Nepal Communist Movement. He joined the Cultural Front led by Puspalal. This was Madan Bhandari's first official political involvement. In 2029 BS, Puspalal's party formed the Janavadi Sanskrit Morcha. Its chairman was Yuddha Prasad Mesra and General Secretary Modnath Prasarit, while Madan Bhandari was the center member. Seeing the current activities of the Madan Bhandari, the party membership was granted to Madan Bhandari in 2029 BS. He participated in the Revolutionary Intellectual Conference held in January of the same year. The conference established the Nepali Revolutionary Democratic Cultural Association with Yuddha Prasad Mesra as its president and Mornat as its general secretary. Madan Bhandari was elected unopposed as the central member. It started publishing Mukti Morcha as its mouthpiece. While in this publishing group, Madan Bhandari began to spread revolutionary philosophy and thought in the cultural film. From here, his journey with a systematic political responsibility begins. Madan Bhandari became a full-time comrade of the party in 2030 BS. The Mukti Morcha group was formed in 2033 BS. The leaders who were active revolted against Puspalal's party and joined the coordination center before the establishment of CPN-ML in 2034 BS and the Mukti Morsa group was immersed into CPN-ML, was formed in 2035 BS. At the same time, Madan Bhandari became active in the politics of the then-ML. The party was underground, the top leaders were all in jail. In such a challenging situation, Madan Bhandari took the organizational responsibility of ML and led the movement. After that, Madan Bhandari continued to lead the anti-Panchayat movement. Eventually, due to his successful ideological and organization leadership, he formulated a new theory of political competition in the communist movement. Madan Bhandari, who started his political career through progressive literature due to his literary tendency, involvement and active participation, married Vidya Devi, daughter of father Ram Bahadur Pandey and mother Mithila Pandey, resident of Bhospur district on 2039 BS. At that time, Madan Bhandari was a central member of the Communist Party of Nepal, ML, and Vidya Devi was an active female activist. The couple, who got married due to the development trend in the party, started their married life by swearing under the party flag. It was natural for the family responsibility to increase after they had two children, Usa Kiran on BS 2041 and Nisa Kusuk on 2044 BS. However, regular and systematic study, readiness for work and negligence did not diminish. Madan Mandari became the general secretary of the fourth government convention of the CPN UAML in 2046 BS. He came out of the underground life in 2047 BS and became the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Nepal, Unified Marxist Leninist. Madan Bhandari, after defeating the Interim Prime Minister Krishna Prasad Bhattarai in parliamentary election of 2048 BS, Kathmandu constituency number one, 
Madan Bhandari was elected as a member of the House of Representatives. Madan Bhandari is considered to be one of the leading leaders of the democratic movement in Nepal and a distinguished ideology of the communist movement. Mainly, the program of people's multi-party democracy was put forward with the belief of leading the communist movement on the path of peaceful struggle to communism through socialism. The fifth General Convention of the CPN UML in 2049 BS approved Madan Bhandari's proposals as people's multi-party democracy. Madan Bhandari was a firm believer in principle while formulating work policy. He also looked after the interests of the people and the country and financially he did not get into any dispute. Even when Madan Bhandari assumed such a powerful position as the general secretary of the party, he used to live in a rented house. He had no home in Kathmandu. Madan Bhandari and Jeevras were on a nationwide campaign to spread the message of multi-party democracy passed by the fifth general convention. During the same campaign, a vehicle carrying them mysteriously crashed in Das Tunga on May 16, 1993 AD. The UML district convention was held in Kaski. They had gone to Pokhara from Kathmandu to participate in the same convention. After the program in Pokhara, they were going to Chitwan as Madan Bhandari was the chief guest of the women's convention in Chitwan. After addressing the program in Chitwan, he was preparing to go to the district of Eastern Nepal with the message of 5th General Convention. However, they could not reach the women's convention in Chitwan. The vehicle was heading towards Chitwan from Pokhara via Muglim. When Das Tunga of Chitwan came, then the speed of the car slowed down a bit. And around 5 pm, the jeep Ba of 8793 they were riding in fell on Trishuli. The driver of the vehicle, Amar Lama, jumped out of the vehicle. However, Madan Bhandari and Jeevraj Asrit went missing along with their vehicles at Vale of Trishuli. After that, the news of Madan Bhandari and Jeevraj's accident spread sensationally all over the country. The jeep went missing in the river, but the jeep driver, Amar Lama, was saved. So, the rumor spread that this was not an accident but a conspiracy. Leaders Madan Bhandari and Jeevraj Asrit were not expected to be safe as the jeep went missing in Trishuli. For many days after the accident, the Nepal police did not even see the bodies of their leaders. After several days of efforts, their bodies were recovered from Trishuli only after divers were bought from Bangladesh. The body was found in Ganjipur of Chitwan on 5th Jester after the accident. The body was kept at a guest house in front of Bharatpur police office on the same day. The body was sent to Kathmandu after thousands of activists in Chitwan paid their last respect. Madan Bhandari died at the age of 41. After the Anil Commission formed on behalf of the government reported that the accident took place due to the negligence of the driver, the UML started agitation again. After the agitation, the government again formed another commission of inquiry under the chairmanship of Supreme Court Judge Trilok Pratap Rana. The Trilok Commission could not investigate the incident. Instead, the Trilok Commission submitted a report stating that a serious investigation was needed. After not being satisfied with the findings of various commission, the CPN UML formed a commission headed by KPOLI. The Oli led commission concluded that the Das Tunga massacre was not an accident but a mysterious massacre. Four commissions were formed for the same massacre, but no one was found guilty. As the driver Amar Lama, who was a witness in the accident, was saved, it was suspected that he had caused the accident by conspiracy. The Chitwan District Court sentenced Amar Lama to life imprisonment for his reckless driving. But Amar Lama was released by the Supreme Court after serving five years in prison. After that, the driver Amar Lama became the editor of Taza Cover and joined Nepali Congress at the same time. 
the investigation process was becoming more and more complicated as the only witness to the accident, Amr Lama, was assassinated by an unknown group in 2060 BS. An unidentified group assassinated Amr Lama in broad daylight in Kirtipur. Police have not been able to find the killer of Amr Lama yet. The mysterious assassination of Amr Lama has made the Das Tunga incident even more mysterious. Amr Lama, the only surviving driver of the incident, was killed 10 years later. In today's world, such scandals in a country like ours can be investigated if the state wants. The case has become more mysterious as one of the facilitators of the Das Tunga case, Amr Lama, has also been killed. However, it is possible to open the file. So let's open the file of Das Tunga case. Is Das Tunga case an accident or a conspiracy? Who is the killer of Madan Mandari and Jeevraj Astrid? Why was the driver Amar Lama, who was a witness, killed? At that time, the youths who took to streets saying that the Das Tunga scandals should be investigated are now getting old. When the government was changed many times, the UML itself joined the government. However, the incident was not satisfactorily investigated. The jeep fell, but the driver survived. Amar Lama, a resident of Tanuhu, was the driver of Madan Mandari. Madan Mandari, Jeevraj Astrid, Gorkha District Committee Secretary Rishi Katel, and driver Amar Lama were present on the day when Madan Vandari returned from addressing a rally in Pokhara. Rishi Katel leave them all in the middle. When Muglin arrived, Madan Vandari wanted to drink tea. Driver Amar Lama arranged for tea in a hut on a deserted road. Shortly after having tea, the jeep fell into the Trisuli River 150 feet below the right side of Das Tunga Road. The jeep fell, Madan Vandari and Jeevraj disappeared. However, driver Amar Lama survived. According to driver Amar Lama's statement, driver Amar Lama also fell together. However, driver Amar Lama insisted that he managed to swim out. The clothes of Amar Lama, the driver who swam out of a murky water, were kept in plastic. But the driver Amar Lama's clothes did not contain any sand. The driver Amar Lama was not injured when he fell 150 feet into the vehicle. The driver Amar Lama easily swam out of the river of Trisuli. Ten years later, the same driver Amar Lama was shot dead in Kirtipur on BS 2060, Shravan 11th at 4.15 pm. Amar Lama was shot in the head from behind. Amar Lama was shot in the head with a 9M pistol usually used by the police and a .676. It was said that Amar Lama was killed by the Maoists at that time. After the Das Tunga incident, Amar Lama spent about four years in jail. However, the Supreme Court sentenced Amar Lama to two years in prison and fined him only 500 rupees. Following the Supreme Court decision, Amar Lama was released from prison. Meanwhile, Amar Lama left the UML and joined the Nepali Congress to secure himself. Amar Lama used to stay in New Banisher and started going to the office as the managing editor of Taza Khabar Weekly, which has an office in Kalikastan. Less than a week after joining office, Amar Lama was abducted from the office of Taza Khabar on the afternoon of BS 2060, Shravan 11th, and was killed in Kirtipur a few hours later. At the height of Maoist insurgency, Amar Lama was assassinated in gorilla style. The condition of the vehicle is unanswered. Before the accident, the vehicle was fine in all respects. For example, the air, steering, gear, brakes, etc. of the four wheels were all fine. The car was in number one gear. The vehicle's four wheels were kept in neutral. That is, the vehicle was driven in such a way that the driver could easily jump. In other words, the questions of why the vehicle was driven in easy number one gear and four wheel neutral is always unanswered. Husk piled up on the road. Two piles of husk 
were placed at the spot where the vehicle fell. The vehicle had fallen between the two piles. If the vehicle had fallen from a place other than that, it would have been less likely to fall directly into the river. So the question is, who poured the husk in that solitude and for what purpose? This has also been an unanswered question forever. Many commission for investigation. Four commissions were formed in the name of Das Tunga incident. Former Judge Prachandra Raz Anil commission was formed on behalf of the government. On behalf of UML party, a separate commission was formed under the chairmanship of the then standing community member KP Oli, while another commission was formed under the coordination of Padma Ratna Tuladar. Unsatisfied with the report of Anil Commission, the UML launched a nationwide agitation and a fourth commission was formed under the chairmanship of the then judge Trilok Pratap Rana. However, none of these commissions were able to function properly. The only commission formed by the party also became a mere witness. The UML leaders themselves are ignorant about the reports of the Oli Commission. How did the pants fall? Shyam Bahadur Tamang had torn the bodies of the two leaders during the post-mortem. Shyam Bahadur Tamang has said that Madan Bhandari's body was thick, he wore pants. If the bottom of the pants is worn, the pants does not fall even if the person is in the water. If it falls, the underwear also falls together. However, Madan Bhandari did not have any pants on his body, but his underwear with loose elastic was there. How is it possible? Post-mortem veteran Shyam said he still don't understand this aspect. Visera report is a hoax. Shyam Bahadur Tamang had torn the bodies of the two leaders during the post-mortem. The UML was interpreting the line as a conspiracy and demanding an investigation. In order to investigate whether the death of the two leaders was natural or unnatural by examining him, therefore the doctors decided to remove some of the body parts of both the leaders. Shyam Bahadur Tamang received instructions from doctors to remove the necessary organs. So, accordingly to the instruction, a small piece of the heart of both the leaders, half of each of the kidney, half a kilo of liver and other body parts was taken out. The viscera would reach the researcher's body in the same way that the viscera were removed from the body. But according to Shyam, when the Rana Commission carried out the investigation, they were found in a vial glass bottle, not in a syringe as mentioned in the memorandum. His guess is that the body parts which were sent in syringe with seals were found in glass bottle without cells. So the commission called Shyam to understand the location of the viscera. Commission official repeatedly asked him, Did you put him in a syringe? He replied that it was kept in a syringe and signed by everyone. After this answer, the officials of the commission looked confused. The controversy over why the body parts of the two leaders were mysteriously transferred from syringe to glass bottle was not made public. Thank you.